Now remember, this is cup six, right? This is our last cup of flour. So I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit down on the counter, not tons. A lot of people tend to knead in tons and tons of flour. We just want a little flour on the counter. Turn this out. To start kneading, shape the dough into sort of a rough oval on your countertop in that flour. Have your extra flour nearby, the rest of your cup emergency six. emergency flour. <laughs> I'm going to flour my hands a little bit, pat this out into an oval shape, and then take the dough and fold it in half towards you as you're working. Using the floured heel of your palm, we're going to roll that away. We're not getting our fingertips into this. We're just using this part of the hand. Quarter turn, flour if you need it, fold, roll, quarter turn. Mm -hmm. And I see it as really nice and gentle. Very gentle motion. Okay, if you're an aggressive kneader, you tend to push down really hard onto this dough and it exposes that sticky heart or center and you think, oh, I've got to get more flour into this. So it's fold, roll, and turn. Now, if things are getting really sticky on your countertop, you can always get more flour underneath. And if your hands become really goopy, you can do what we call a dry flour wash. Just take a little flour and sort of rub off that stuff that's making everything sticky. Get that away. You don't want that to get into your dough. And then re-flour your hands. So don't wash your hands in between. Just Better to do the dry flour wash because if you run to the sink and wash your hands, they're going to get wet mm -hmm. and you're going to come back and that wet is going to get into the dough. So here's our cup six. Good. You're going to flour up. Wow. It's kind of like a chalk for a gymnast, right? <laughs> Except this is a little easier than doing the rings. <laughs> the dough is doing all the gymnastics. Yes. Try to avoid getting your fingers into the dough. You kind of use your hands like flippers almost. Good. Terry, I'm going to interrupt you for just a minute. You've been kneading for seven minutes or so, I'd say. So let's take a look and see, do we have good gluten development? One thing you'll notice is this dough looks beautiful. I mean, it's really soft. You can really stretch it. It's not tight and dry. And it's also smooth. So we're going to check this and make sure we have some nice gluten development. And a good way to do that is to just tighten that dough up into a little ball, get some flour on your fingers, and then press down gently on the dough. Do you see what's happening when you're pressing Stringing down on back. the dough? Bouncing right back. Now we've got good gluten development. We're ready for this dough to go back into the bowl to rise. But look how much flour we have left from that cup six. I would say we have a good quarter cup of flour. Mm -hmm. If we had forced that in, we wouldn't have a dough that's nice and soft like this. So this is why we have ranges when we deal with baking. This is the first rise. It's going to develop a lot of flavor in our bread. So I'm going to spray the bowl here with a little bit of nonstick spray. And you could also use butter or olive oil or vegetable oil. Get this in the bowl. The reason I like to use spray on top is so the dough won't stick to the plastic wrap. And get it into a nice warm place or just out of draft for about an hour. 